<clears throat> Hello students and YouTube learners. This is Dr. Satish Singhal, PhD, Professor of Computer Science, El Camino College, Torrance, California. We are at video 4 or 5 for design example 4, pizza cost calculation order processing software. <clears throat> and in the first video, we did the problem description. In the second video, we did uh, <clears throat> variable mapping, which was input variable, output variable, and computational variable. In third video, which is the most important so far, we did analysis, which was analysis of math formula, as well as Boolean conditions and algorithms, those are executed inside them. And flag setting. <clears throat> okay, in this one, we will use the analysis. So now I want you to understand the structure of IOA and the way we build software. <clears throat> the choice of variable name and data types are used in analysis where we set up the all the arithmetical expressions and boolean expressions and then analysis used in writing algorithm and finally algorithm becomes foundation for the source code and source code will be done in the last video uh, all the details are in in the algorithm so if you understand the algorithm very well, understanding source code would be pretty easy. <clears throat> so first we do a high level algorithm. High level means we kind of see the outlines of the algorithm, okay? So purpose of high level algorithm is to have an overview of overall software structure. And then we can fill in the low level details after that, our algorithm becomes a foundation for the source code after all the low level details have been filled in. And high level algorithm as follows, and we are using the letter H for that. Obviously, you're going to get four user inputs and their name. Name is just repeated back. There's no processing on that or anything. <clears throat> and the four user inputs will be pizza size, choice for flour in the pizza crust, cheese type, and the topping. And correspondingly, we set four Boolean flags for each one for determining the parameters of pizza order. You would recall from this picture we showed earlier in analysis, those were the four inputs get code, get flower code, get cheese code, get topping code. This one and this one were <clears throat> character, char type, and this and this were integer, int type. And then we set these four flag, Boolean flags, flag base code, flag flower code, flag cheese code, and flag topping code. And these Boolean expressions we had explained quite well in the video number three <clears throat> okay so that's the in getting the four user input and setting the four flags okay continue with the high level algorithm <clears throat> then we did if all flags are true we saw that in the previous part then we use nested if and else four times use nested if and else to set the base cost. That has to be done first because we use the base cost for other computations. Then use nested if and else to set cost increment by flower, increment due to flower. And this can be done in any order, but this order is just as good. <clears throat> and then we use nested if and else to set cost cheese increment means increment due to cheese and we use nested if and else to set topping increment, increment due to topping. We compute the total raw cost. We compute the whole dollars and remaining cents. 
and we compute and we print the cost in whole dollars and remaining cents. But if any of those flags are true, remember we use the end and operator. Truth table for end and operator says that even if one <clears throat> Boolean expression is false, the whole Boolean expression is false. And in that case, the program will execute this else block. Here, we're going to test each flag for its falsity. And if it's false, we'll test for the falsity by putting a negation in the front and we'll print corresponding error message for the user. So that's the high level algorithm. <clears throat> so what we're going to do, we'll show you now all the steps of the algorithm. And in a way we have done up to here already this. And what was in these four parts was that we had done the Boolean condition table. And now <clears throat> selectively we'll show you how we can use the Boolean condition table to actually do the algorithm for nested if and else. And it's a pretty straightforward translation, although doing Boolean conditions separately clarifies for us what has to be done in the algorithm. The, the kind of clarity we get is actually very pretty brilliant, in my opinion, because then <clears throat> we can use any type of selection structure. We can use if, and in some places we have to use if only, or we can use nested if and else for those cases where one out of many situations will be true. <clears throat> okay, so let's show the fine grain algorithm where every step can be converted to C. That's the fine grain algorithm. But not necessarily C. With the fine grained algorithm, you can convert it to any other programming language. The rest will become clear by algorithm and source code reading. Also, you should not depend wholly on just the video for full understanding. You will need to work through this document as well, which will also be uploaded. <clears throat> okay. Some of the steps in algorithm are pretty straightforward. They were done earlier in the analysis also. Add all include directives and declare any global constants. Using global constants or not, like for base cost, etc. In this case, we are leaving it kind of optional. Um, I will only know at the source code level whether I did that or not. I don't have to make that decision now, like which constants will be used, which will be directly hard coded into the source code. But we have that choice. We can declare global constants for anything that is a hard number. Okay. And then we had a whole list of input, output and computational variable. <clears throat> In program like this, it's not a bad idea to declare them up front, although C++ allows them to be declared as you use them, okay? Since we do get user's first name, we prompt them for their first name, and we store them into name variable. What are these? Now, what are, whatever I'm using variable names, these were decided in the input variable table. So you'll just have to go to page one of this document and look look them up. And of course they were discussed in the first video, second video actually. And then print green user with the name and print program description. Prompt them to enter pizza size. Tell them it could be S for small, M for medium, L for large x for extra large. You're just giving your procedure. You can come up with the language yourself. And whatever they enter here will be stored into a size variable. 
okay there i call it code so it should be actually code so let's change it and <clears throat> convert that input into uppercase letter and that's just to make sure that this expression doesn't come out to be false if they enter lowercase m because their intent is pretty clear what size of pizza they want and then <clears throat> this was the expression for flag base code we have described that in previous video and we do the same thing for the other we get the and prompt to enter flower code get in store in flower code variable we set the boolean flag for flower code which will be this one this was explained in the last video and we do the same thing enter cheese code store in cheese code variable convert this was a character so we'll convert user input over is letter again set the boolean flag for cheese type with this expression this was explained in the analysis in the last video and then the topping type and topping type could be 0 1 2 3 4 5 and we store that into topping code variable and we set the boolean flag for topping code using this boolean expression this was shown in previous video in that picture step by step and then <clears throat> obviously we cannot compute the cost unless all our flags like this one this one this one and this one are true we're not doing here that if one input is wrong we exit the program <clears throat> we take all the inputs and then decide whether we can compute the cost or not okay and that's emphasized because we want to learn using the flag technology there are many ways to write same software but we are right if we are writing in certain way because we are emphasizing use of certain technology and flag technology is prominent in this case okay then it is clear that if all flags are true that means we got correct user input to build the pizza remember property of n and operator all boolean expressions joined by an operator has to be true for the whole boolean expression to be true this is a boolean expression it will be true when each one of its part is true okay then we can process the pizza cost computation and now i'm going to go back and forth between analysis and algorithm and of course i'm not going to do all cases but i'll show you enough that when you read this document you will understand that so let's go back to our boolean condition table for the base cost okay so this should be together all right so we had this boolean condition if code equals equals s if that is true then base cost is set to 2 2.0 and the others notice in analysis it doesn't tell you whether you should use if for each just put if here if here or if else if that gives you the flexibility that you could do it either way but of course efficiency is the key issue if you use if structure only that would be very slow because if everybody wanted large pizza then these three tests would be useless that's going to slow it down we have explained this concept quite well in uh, example when we were computing students grade for different numerical percentages 
So this is done in using nested if and else, like as follows <clears throat> in the algorithm. That if core equals equal s, then set base cost to 2.0, else if, if it's m, set the base cost to 4.0. If it is l, means large pizza, base cost is 6, else base cost is 8. Notice we are not using else if, because this flag true means that code will only have values s, m, l, and x. If it didn't have those four values, this flag will be false. And then whole expression will be false. So we don't need else if code equals equals x. Because that's obvious. This flag true means that code could be this, this, or x. So else is enough and that speeds up the, our program. Okay, one more time. Notice what, how I'm doing the algorithm. This was item 19, this was 19.1, this is 19.11, this is 19.111. It has to be layered like this. If algorithm is not layered like this, whole thing becomes non-specific. We wouldn't know. I couldn't tell you that, okay, I have problem with 19.111 uh, on, on the phone which you can look, look up in your document. So layering and fine graining in algorithm is done to make communication about algorithm easier. Okay, in this case I did put the line number two as well, so that could make life a little bit easier. But generally in scientific document line numbers are not put. In legal document you always need them. But in writing algorithm you should see this layering and fine grain structure that is definitely needed actually okay and please understand that if it's not done this way then it's not a standard algorithm document which means there will be point penalty if this layering 19 9.1 19.11 19.111 is not done okay Also, notice how we did if and else. Again, we pointed that out in lab three design example also. When you have if, you have if condition inside the parenthesis and word then, nothing else is put in this line. What is done under this scope is done on the next line and if you have one more line, else if is the same way. Else does not have it then, it doesn't test any condition and then whole structure has to end with end if that's required. Okay, so now let's go to flower increment and let's look at the boolean condition table. So here if flower code is 0 equals true then notice there is no cost increment. So you have two ways to do it. You can actually do an if for that but not or set, set this to zero actually, okay? But <clears throat> we don't wanna actually do that. It's a useless computation. So the approach I've taken, we'll just skip that, not even bother for it. And of course, for that, we'll have to initialize that to zero before uh, doing the if and else. That will be shown in the source code, how we do that. But if it's <clears throat> one, then we use this expression and base cost has been determined by then so we just use this expression as it is and if it is two then we use this expression organic whole wheat and so on if we skip this one then we have to use else if here otherwise <clears throat> even when they entered zero if we just use else it will fall to this case. This will become clear as soon as I show you in the algorithm. Let's take, take a look at that. <clears throat> so notice that 
to see flower increment <clears throat> zero flower code does not is not considered because it doesn't increase the cost so we start with one first flower code equals equals one then we use that expression and there I used 2.0 yeah you can divide it any time that probably won't matter and <clears throat> I, I'm not going to change it here because it means the same thing. LC flower code is 2, then increment flower is 0 0.04 into base cost. You can change it to uh, 4.0 divided by 100, multiply the base cost. Now notice that the last one, when it's 3, I do need else if, I do need to do this. Boolean comparison, relational comparison, because we left out zero. And if I just have else here, then this code will execute for flower code three and zero both. And that would be wrong. So because I left out even the code for flower code equals zero, we cannot use else here. We have to use else if. Uh, this is very important. Please understand that. If I didn't check for the three and just had only else here, then this block will execute for oops, zero and three both. And that would be wrong for the zero. For three, it'll be okay. <clears throat> so that's the translation from Boolean condition table to source code to compute increment due to flower flower in incre, incre flower okay something similar happens for the cheese and the topping notice that they may not want extra cheese or exotic cheese or they may not want any topping in that case increment for cheese or and topping is zero Let's look at the Boolean condition table and then the corresponding algorithm. So <clears throat> for cheese, if they entered R, there's no increment because that's one layer of cheese you have to give in pizza. But if they want extra cheese, they will enter E. Then our increment is different. There is an increment, non-zero increment, and so on for the jalapeno and goat cheese. How are they converted into algorithm that we see here? <clears throat> oh, okay. So I forgot the flower. Sorry. So let's do the flower first. Let's go back. Not the cheese. Okay. Yeah. So if they want regular flower, actually, I did flower, right? Sorry, I'm confused. Yeah, I did flower. Just have to do the cheese now. Where's my brain? Yeah, I did flower already. So once again, we are not considering cheese code equals R because it doesn't increase the cost. Okay? So we go directly to E, extra cheese. And this expression came directly from the Boolean condition table. If it's jalapeno, J, then cheese increment will be this else if cheese code equals equal g for good cheese then that's the expression and notice again i cannot do else here i cannot delete this part because we left out cheese code r and because r didn't increase any cost and if you else, then this will be executing for R and G both. And for R, it will be wrong. Okay. And finally, the topping. We do the same thing. Case topping code zero is not considered because it doesn't increase the cost. I start directly by one. And you can look at these expression in the table. These are directly expressions 
that we have in this table here okay except I did just division by 100 and in interest of time I'm not changing them there you can do that yourself if you like so <clears throat> converting this to nested if and else I'm leaving this one out but I'm considering all others including this being else if so this is done as follows it's actually pretty straightforward now I test whether top and core entered was one if that was the case this is my expression for computing increment due to topping if it's two else if that's my computational expression computer will execute that if it's three computer will execute this if it is four computer will execute this and notice I am doing else if for five because I left out zero because zero doesn't increase the cost if I didn't use, if I only use else here, then this case would be executed for both topping, topping code zero and five. For five it will be okay, but for zero it will be wrong. So I have to use else if here, okay? <clears throat> All right. Now, if your compiler says, hmm, I'm thinking about this now. It gives you a warning that one of the case may not be executed. What do you do then? Actually, it won't if you set the topping increment to zero up front here. That you should definitely do. Otherwise, it will give you a warning that what happens if none of these conditions are true. So initialization of all the these variables, this, flower increment and base cost. Base cost we use else, so probably won't matter. Initialization before you put them into expression is extremely important. Uh, we will show that to you in the source code. Okay. Rest is easy. We calculate the total cost, adding all the computation for different costs we've done. This algorithm has been explained before. Getting total pennies, rounded pennies, dollars, and cents. So I won't go through that again. It's been done many times. You, let's hope you're not bored with it by now. And finally, I got dollars and cents, and I output them. Notice your lab four has output in a table. You have to show algorithm of the table in the algorithm. Otherwise, it won't be complete. Okay, and we've done the table in, we've shown it how it's done in some of the examples in the lecture. So you just need to learn how to use set w from there. Okay, now notice that if one or more flags were false, all four could be false or one of them can be false then this boolean expression will be false in that case it will execute the else block and else block simply checks each flag and sees which one is false and so it's done as follows so if they entered wrong base code this flag will be false negation of that will be true that's where first time we are using negation sign to our advantage. Then we print invalid pizza size was inputted. Purpose here is to give user the feedback, like what input was not correct. What input didn't allow us to process their pizza order. Here we have to use and standalone if which ends with end if in each case. This is another structure you will learn. If we have only if standalone if statement, it does the conditional test, task under the conditional test, and an end if each time. Okay. Then if 
flower code was entered wrong, then this flag will be false. Negation of that will be true. And then print invalid flower code input it. And if, and if cheese code was entered wrong, then this flag will be false. Negation will be true. And then print invalid cheese code input it. And if, and if topping co code was less than zero, greater than five, that would be invalid. This will be false. Negation will be true. And then we enter invalid topping code was inputted. This is it. That's the translation from using all the analysis, which was used in mathematical computations, arithmetical computations, as well as coding all the selection structures, which could be a bunch of standalone ifs as we have done here, or they could be nested if and else as we have done here for finding different cost, four different costs, base cost, flower cost, cheese increment and topping increment. So that's my description for algorithm. We have done the four parts now out of five. And certainly by now, source code becomes much easier because we're going to be following this. When we discuss source code, I'll just kind of go back and forth between this document and source code. And by now, source code, whatever it should be, is pretty clear. Uh, so this is Dr. Satish Singhal. PhD, Professor of Computer Science, El Camino College, Torrance, California, saying goodbye from video four or five of our design example four. I'll see you very soon in the last uh, source code video. Thank you.